Hello students, welcome to today's session on gram staining technique. Gram staining technique was developed in 1880 by the Danish bacteriologist Christian Gram. He was testing new methods to stain biopsy and autopsy materials. Christian Gram was a very modest person and he remarked like this in one of his initial publications. I have therefore published the method, although I am aware that as yet it is very defective and imperfect. But it is hoped that also in the hands of other investigators, it will turn out to be useful. Gram staining is the most important and widely used differential staining in microbiology. Based on this staining reaction, almost all bacteria can be differentiated into two major groups called gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Usually, 24-hour-old cultures are preferred for gram staining technique. Why bacteria stain differently during gram staining procedure? The difference in the chemical and physical nature of the bacterial cell wall is responsible for this difference in response to gram stain. The gram negative cell wall is thin, complex, multi layered, and contains relatively high lipid content and low peptidoglycan content. Gram-positive cells have less lipid and thick peptidoglycan layer. Let's see what is gram staining. Gram staining is a type of differential staining which uses four reagents and has got four steps. The four reagents include the primary stain crystal violet, the modern Gram's iodine, decolorizing agent like 95% ethanol or ethanol acetone solution and the counter stain which is otherwise called the secondary stain, sephranin. Gram positive cells will appear violet in color and gram negative cells will appear red in color by the gram staining technique. Let's move on to the first step in gram staining. The heat fixed smear of the organism is first treated with the primary stain called crystal violet for 30 seconds. It is a basic dye and its function is to impart its color to all cells. At this stage, all the organisms including gram positive and gram negative organisms appear violet in color. During the second step, after washing the smear with running tap water, the smears are treated with the grams iodine. This reagent acts as a killing agent as well as the mordant. A mordant is a substance that increases the cell's affinity for a particular stain. It binds with the primary stain and forms an insoluble crystal violet iodine complex. All cells appear violet or purple at this stage. In the third step, the smear is treated with the decolorizing agent like 95% ethanol or ethanol acetone solution. This is the actual differentiating step in the gram staining procedure. In this step, the decolorization of the smears is done by adding ethanol or ethanol acetone solution drop by drop until no more color flows from the smear. Excess decolorization will make gram positive organisms to lose stain and give false results. During the decolorization process, Gram negative bacteria will lose the crystal violet iodine complex 
whereas the gram positive cells retain the same. The decolorizing agents act as both lipid solvent and dehydrating agent. In gram negative bacteria, the decolorizing agent readily dissolves the higher amounts of lipids leading to the formation of large pores in the cell wall. At the same time, dehydration and flattening of cell wall proteins is taking place but do not close the pores on the cell wall appreciably as numerous pores are produced on gram-negative cell wall. Through these pores, crystal violet iodine complex leakages take place and the cells become colorless. In contrast, the gram-positive cell walls are thick and chemically simple, composed mainly of protein and cross-linked polypeptides. When treated with alcohol, lipid is dissolved and pores are produced but only in a few numbers. Protein dehydration causes the closure of cell wall pores thereby preventing the loss of crystal violet iron complex and the cells remain violet colored. Also, peptidoglycan content plays an important role in this step. In gram-positive bacteria, peptidoglycan content is high, which is cross-linked well. So, the porosity is less to allow the escape of crystal violet iodine complex. In gram-negative bacteria, peptidoglycan content is less and are poorly cross-linked. Hence, more porosity and a crystal violet iodine complex can escape easily. Coming to the fourth and final step of gram staining technique. In this step, the smear is treated with the counter stain or the secondary stain called sephranin for 30 seconds. Counter stain is usually a basic dye having a different color from that of the primary stain crystal violet. Sephranin is the most commonly used counter stain in gram staining procedure. The gram negative organisms which have lost the crystal violet iodine complex take up this red dye through the pores created by decolorizing agents and appear red in color. The gram-positive organisms which did not lose crystal violet iodine complex will not take up the secondary stain and remain violet in color. After performing these steps, the smears can be washed and the smears are observed under oil immersion objective of 100x. The gram-positive cells will appear in violet color as they retain the crystal violet and gram-negative cells appear as red as they take up the secondary stain sephranin. By the gram staining technique, we can actually divide the bacteria into four groups. As we already mentioned, we can divide the bacteria into two major groups like gram-positive cells and gram-negative cells. Gram-positive cells will retain the crystal violet and appear deep violet in color. The gram-negative cells do not retain the crystal violet and hence take up the sephranin or the secondary stain to appear red in color. The third group is called the gram-non-reactive organisms. These organisms do not stain or they stain very poorly. Atypical bacteria remain colorless to gram staining procedure. They are neither gram positive nor gram negative. Examples are microorganisms coming under Chlamydiaceae and Mycoplasmataceae including Mycoplasma. These organisms lack a peptidoglycan layer and hence could not retain the crystal violet. Another example is Rickettsiaceae which are actually gram-negative organisms but too small to stain well by the procedure. The fourth group is gram-variable organisms which stain unevenly during gram staining. Sometimes 
very old cultures of gram positive bacteria will lose their ability to retain crystal violet iodine complex and get decolorized during the gram staining and take up safranic. Also changes in the environment of the organism or slight changes in the staining techniques can cause the same problem. This phenomenon is called gram variable reaction. Thank you for watching. See you soon with another topic. Till then, goodbye.